I'm Darren Foster. I've spent many years researching my family's history in Dardanup and finding out about my grandfather's war service and his connections to Dardanup. I've got three sons and for me it's really important to, for my sons to know about their origins and particularly the experience of their great-grandfather in World War I and World War II. I want them to know about it so they can pass it on to future generations. My grandfather was an orphan so he didn't know his birth date. He didn't really know what his name was. He made up parents' names. He had very uncertain and mysterious origins from our point of view. He was sent to Dardanup as an orphan at the age of 16 to work on a farm and spent many years there uh, working with the Venn family on their farm called Dardanup Park. And then he ended up at Wellington Mill as a mill hand. And from there, along with a lot of uh, mates, both at the mill and in Dardanup more generally, enlisted in World War I in 1914. John George Foster, my grandfather, known as George, uh, enlisted in 1914. He trained at Black Boy Hill, uh, Mount Helena, and then uh, sailed to Egypt. And from Egypt, he went to Gallipoli um, as part of the 10th Light Horse Regiment. And within a year of uh, having enlisted, he suffered his first gunshot wound and was evacuated to Malta for some recovery. He spent uh, a number of years both in Gallipoli and the Middle East and not only suffered war wounds, so he, had, he suffered the gunshot wound, but he also had uh, bomb shrapnel in one of his thumbs that had to be operated on. But he suffered from the illnesses and diseases that many of the troops suffered, which was eczema, uh, cholera, dysentery, malaria, uh, abscesses, uh, a whole range of ailments that really knocked their bodies about uh, over and above the war wounds they received from, from bullets and shrapnel and uh, they carried those psychological and physical scars for the rest of their lives. When he enlisted, he wasn't married, so he perhaps didn't have any sense of uh, obligation to a spouse, uh, but he was very concerned about the well-being of his mates uh, and talked about them through his life. And he uh, went off to war, perhaps with a sense of adventure, perhaps having no clue what was awaiting him, um, but that was the thing to do, to go to war with your mates and um, try and look after them. He took with him his only possession, which was his horse, Doug. And one of the things that he was most upset about when he returned many years later was that he had to leave his horse behind. He was quite upset about that, as were many of the soldiers who had to do the same thing. They, they all had to leave their horses behind. And for a, a young farmer, um, who didn't have much in the way of income or, or financial means, that was a pretty important possession and a friend, a mate, <laughs> his four-legged mate he had to leave behind. George uh, came back to Darden up in 1919. He uh, soon after married a, a local girl, um, Eileen O'Neill, and they had a daughter. Unfortunately, she died in childbirth, so it was a fairly tragic uh, start to that marriage and he was so heartbroken, he walked off the farm he was on. It was a soldier settler block and uh, uh, moved to Midland. His daughter was brought up by her grandparents in Dardanup. Uh, some years later, George uh, married another girl from Dardanup because uh, he'd obviously been visiting regularly to see his daughter. And they went on to have four children, including my father. And uh, quite a you know large family and lots of responsibilities. But when World War II came around, uh, George decided to enlist again, but this time at the ripe old age of 49. Uh, and he, he worked in the Army Stores Depot in Perth, um, which you'd think would be a pretty safe job. But he managed to get himself in a truck rollover, um, I think driving to Northern, and got pretty severe burns on uh, one arm and one leg. So he was technically wounded in two world wars. <laughs> After... Uh, George married for the second time. The family moved to Midland, um, but still maintained their connection to Dardanup. So many of my dad's cousins would come up from Dardanup and stay with their uncle George and auntie Evelyn in Midland, uh, or go there um, from boarding school for weekends. And of course, uh, my grandparents would go back to Dardanup fairly regularly. So the family connection has been maintained and my family also goes uh, to and from Dardanup from time to time. So 
the connection has been very strong and for, for a very long time. Yeah. There's a great newspaper clipping about his return from the war in Dardanup in 1919, where Dardanup put on a, a great uh, event for four soldiers who came back, including my grandfather. They were the toast of the town. They were fated by everybody. Um, there was a very big celebration to see them back. The, the four mates were very, very close and uh, served through the war together and remained close for the rest of their lives. My grandfather died when I was four years old. I have one memory of him in his garden, um, but that's it. But I've asked lots of people about him, his cousins, his, uh, you know, my aunts and uncles. Uh, most describe him as, as someone who was very good humoured, always cracking jokes um, and playing pranks and um, most upset obviously about leaving his horse behind and and we'll talk about uh, uh, brewing cha you know tea uh, when he was in Egypt and that's about it um, didn't talk much about the war at all and I think that's not uncommon so many of the soldiers didn't talk about their experiences apart from to their own mates who were there and understand the, the circumstances I think a lot of them carried um, pretty deep psychological and physical scars from the experience and that probably uh, prevented them or, or discouraged them from talking about things with their uh, family members and others and it wasn't the done thing at the time so probably the only ones that know what really went on in those um, uh, situations they were in were the mates that were from Darden up with him. Well, I still, have, I still have a lot of relatives in Dardanup and uh, try and get down there for significant events. And I've got quite involved in researching the uh, backstories of all the Dardanup uh, men and women who went to any war um, so that they can be properly recognised. I think the, the stories are going to fade if uh, we don't record them and share them because a lot of the people who knew these individuals uh, are now passing away and so I think we've got to do everything we can to you know, promote and tell the story of the sacrifice these people made uh, in all our interests.